So I'm just going to virtually hand over to Tony. As moderator on this vision evening, I am unable to join you as Hayley shares the new directions for her association. Since last September, she has brought fresh insight and challenges, fulfilling the brief given on her appointment. The council has been bold in approving fresh ideas and in making difficult choices. It has been great to welcome new trustees and see their thoughtful creativity alongside those who have given the inspiration and commitment in previous years. As you can see on the wall behind me, the walk to Holy Island reminds us we are on a journey of spiritual discovery. I believe you will enjoy tonight and be excited about the imaginative proposals that will transform our association and draw you into being a part of the action. That is my prayer for us all, so that we may see the past honoured and the future developing in ministry and mission to the glory of our Saviour Jesus. Have a great evening. That's great. Well, Tony is uh, sunning himself up uh, somewhere as we speak, but it's great to have a message. So just for those of you uh, that uh, need reminding, uh, I'm just going to explain to us where we've been up to in this point in time, where we're at. So when I first started, uh, my remit, as Tony said, was uh, kind of the transition of the association into something that's relevant for the 21st century. And so we started that with a listening phase and many of you participated in that and we reported back from that um, in kind of January, February time, the, the videos on YouTube if you want to catch up. So from September to December last year, we went about listening, asking all of the stakeholders, that's you as ministers, churches, church secretaries, trustees, church members, uh, what your feelings were about the MBA and a way forward. So that was the listening phase that we then completed. We then met as uh, trustees and we heard and discerned what God was saying in and through us together. We shared that there were some difficult things that we heard, some encouraging things, um, and we wanted to reflect fully on that. And that's what ended up with um, us really embracing that vision of building together for God's kingdom we are a baptist movement and we are interconnected and interlocked and there seems to be real passion and energy around that vision and so we really embraced that that was our strap line before and we've made it our core vision building together for god's kingdom and therefore whenever you encounter us as the mba in whatever facet that is our aim that together we will build up God's kingdom because we want to see our communities transformed with the gospel of Jesus Christ. There has been a kind of, oh sorry that's not working, a disconnect between our vision and the way that people related to the MBA in the past and so we sought to correct that pathway and by doing that we instigated some values and these values should permeate all that we do and we want to be centered on mission. We want to be creative in our approach, relational at the very core of everything we do, spirit led in practice, committed to justice and seeking well-being. As I say, this should be your experience whenever you encounter anything with the NBA kind of branding on it. That's who we are. We are those things. I obviously went into detail of those at the start of the year, and you can find out more about them on our website, the mba.org.uk. But that is what we want to do, and we want to create that as many touching places as possible for those things. So what does that look like in terms of a way forward for ministry and mission? Our desire is to develop how we relate to one another as an association. Our desire is to create multiple touching points for access to the MBA. 
we recognize that the good that has happened in the past and what we're doing is we're seeing that as a foundation to build on to create a different future we know the world we are living in is changing at a fast and rapid weight weight sorry and we want to be in touch with the holy spirit and be agile enough to move and flex with what god is doing in our communities we also want to positively respond to the financial challenges that are ahead of us. It is no secret that um, giving to home mission has been decreasing. Home mission is the common purse that we encourage all of our churches to give 5% of their income to. And that provides for our national resource, our regional resource and local grants in pioneering and church leadership. But over the years, that's been declining. And as a result, it's left all associations having less and less each year. And in the Northeast, we, we haven't got a massive amount in savings. And so we also have a financial challenge that we've had to be creative around. But rather than see this as a negative, we want to positively embrace that as a, as a catalyst, as a springboard for what God may be saying and doing in and through us. We have a desire to train and equip people for ministry and mission in the 21st century. Many of you will have encountered many of our newly accredited ministers and ministers in training that have been trained in the North for the North. And we are so proud of that fairly recent history, but a good history that we have to build on. We unashamedly want to be Baptist and want to train, but not just for accreditation. That's amazing. And we want to see more and more of our churches releasing people, calling people into training and accredited baptist ministry we also want to create a, a structure and a culture of mentoring and discipling and allowing everyone in the church to be released to a new level of leadership and training should be accessed in that and in doing that we're really excited to work with margaret gibbs who is the equip lead uh, which is the lay i hate that word so forgive me but the lay leadership training course for Northern Baptist College and we're we're looking at how we can really equip our local leaders in that and there will be taster sessions coming very soon so do keep an eye out for that. What we've looked at in this process together is a decentralization of our resources and we want to do that in order to to create this ability to flex with what God is doing along the way, as well as creating the many touching points that we can access the MBA. As I said, we want to put mentoring and growth at the center of all that we do, not just for those that aren't yet trained, but that those are in different levels of their leadership and training journey. We all need mentorship. We all need continued ministerial development. And we have an opportunity as a regional team to walk alongside others and mentor and grow what we do. We're going to be partnering with several different organisations and two of those in terms of uh, leadership, our Lead Academy and Inspire. Both of these are third party organisations who, who ha uh, have expertise in training leaders in different ways. Lead Academy works with church leaderships to bring out the best in their leadership styles, looks at how you relate to one another, what makes you tick, how you do ministry and mission together. Inspire is a movement. Both of these have very strong Baptist links. Inspire is a movement that is about putting discipleship and hospitality at the heart of leading churches. And so we're partnering with those two uh, organisations to offer you as churches some more kind of centred um, training. We will be offering a taster event free of charge for both of these lead academies coming up in September and inspire uh, in February. And again, this is just part of our kind of saying we as the MBA don't just want to be the service provider all the time, but we want to walk with you and be a kind of signpost for other things that God is already moving 
in. It comes with us saying we want to work with the wider movement across Baptists and our Christian brothers and sisters from other denominations. We've looked at our governance. That was a key area in our in the listening phase where we just needed some real work and concentrated effort on how we govern, how we are trustees, how we are MBA council. And we've at our last council meeting, we were discerning together, having link trustees for all of our values and different areas of our lives. Not that these people would be doing those things, but in terms of good accountability, being the critical friend for those areas making sure that we don't lose sight of those values. And so again, in September, uh, on our social media and our website, we'll have uh, opportunities for you to meet the trustees of the MBA, hear their heart, see what they're doing, and how they are helping to be a critical friend and walk with us in this time of transition. And I must echo what Tony said, a massive thanks to all the trustees that have served over the years uh, and those new ones that are coming on board. It's been absolutely amazing to work with all of you. In order for this to happen, we're going to be making some changes to the staff team. And as a, this is a result of us seeking to decentralise and creating many touching places for the MBA, combined with the financial challenges ahead of us and the need to release more money for mission and pioneering. And so one of the big structural changes that we will be making is that from December this year, Paul Revel will be moving on. And that's with a real heavy heart, as Paul has served us so faithfully for coming up for 10 years in the NBA. The news that you've just heard for some of you might be a surprise. Others will have anticipated this. Others are part of, have been part of the decision. And uh, it, there are inevitably mixed emotions. So I, I've loved the time I've been in the role as the mission enabler. And I want to thank you all for um, the warmth and the, the way you've uh, welcomed me very much into every one of our churches. I don't think there's any church where I've not felt uh, a part and a place to, uh, to, to serve and to um, work with you. Um, I do feel uh, a sense of thanks and gratitude, actually, because the decision to move on, although in a sense it, it, it's, it's come to me rather than initially being made by me, uh, it feels very timely. It feels very right. I, I've had a good uh, stint with the association and it does feel that it dovetails nicely with God's call for Barbara as well. As you'll know, she's in uh, ministerial training, just coming into her final year. And so thanks to the kindness of the NBA, it'll basically, even though I finish in December, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a bit of space and time over the rest of the, the academic year with Barbara to discern the future. Um, don't know what it is yet. Uh, but all I know is that God is saying that he has something exciting, something maybe a little bit more radical. Uh, I, I'm very much of the view that as we get older, we should become more radical uh, and less comfortable rather than the other way around. And uh, there will be something different from the re either the regional ministry or the local church ministry that I've had before. But I don't know any more than that at the moment. Uh, and as I say, Barbara will be part of that journey uh, as, as we pray and discern together. Um, the only, only other thing I want to say is, uh, in, in the last five months that I'm in this role, uh, I don't just want to dis disappear quietly uh, into the sunset, but I would very much want to have some significant engagement with every one of our churches and try to get around to visit every one of our churches. And particularly, I'd just like to pray with you uh, and, and see whether there's something that God can impart, uh, seeds that can be sown for the future. I want to leave with a sense of planting some seeds that, that God will bring to fruitfulness in the life of every one of our churches as we go on. So you may already um, want to put that in mind. And if there's something particular that you'd like to invite me to do between now and the end of the year, then please do so. Uh, we might organise uh, one or two particular things where I can uh, do that with you. Uh, and, and obviously in return, do pray for us as I will be praying for you uh, as we move into a new and exciting future. Thanks very much. Thank you, uh, Paul. Um, it's It's been amazing to serve with you. I'm looking forward to five months of action-packed joy of serving uh, God together. 
Um, and we are we have penciled this in early so that people can get their dates in their diary. And that's the leaving service celebration um, is going to happen on the 4th of December in the afternoon at Heaton Baptist Church, just because I know that's a busy time of year for some reason. But if you can just uh, pencil that in your diaries, that'd be great because it'd be good to have um, as many as we can from across um, our Baptist movement there. Paul, I'm just going to pause and pray for you, if that's OK, and Barbara as well. And um, that would be great. So, Father God, we thank you for uh, Paul and Barbara. We thank you for the gifts that you have given them. And Father, we thank you that first and foremost, they are children of yours. Father, we thank you for Paul and we thank you for his ministry here in the Northeast. We thank you for how you have blessed his hand at work in all the different areas of enabling mission. And Father, as he seeks the, the next path together with Barbara, we pray that as they lift up their feet, your Holy Spirit will grab a hold of it and place them where they need to be. Father, we thank you for them and we pray for much joy and laughter and pondering and prophetic gifts to be released in the next five months. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Barbara, as well. I know you're in the background there. It's, uh, it's been uh, great. Thank you. Get back. So you may be thinking, well, Hayley, what, what now? And um, so if Paul's moving on. And so I want to share with you the new kind of structure that will happen from January 2023. So I'm continuing to stay on in that transitional role. Um, uh, Linda is, is staying as hub tutor. So Linda already oversees all of our formation and ministerial training. We're going to um, have a children and youth and families facilitator. That's because our churches are, are growing with workers uh, paid and, and not in children, youth and families. And we want to create a support network for our children, youth and families. We recognise that actually families are key to God's kingdom growing. In the listening phase, many churches said they want help and guidance with that. And so we're going to release a CYF uh, facilitator to work with us in that. We're also going to call a justice facilitator. And um, this is someone who's going to work with us and accompany us on, on embedding that value in all that we do. We know that we still have much to do. We heard of some of the injustices that people had experienced in the NBA and our wider Baptist movement. And so we want to be an association that prioritizes God's justice. And so this person will facilitate those conversations and the justice hubs. That's from everything from uh, gender to race to environment. Anything where we need to see God's kingdom justice, that facilitator will be uh, overseeing for us. We're going to um, release a role for a local pioneering facilitator and, facilitator. and this is just someone who will gather the, the pioneers across our um, family together for inspiration, for encouragement, but will also be there as a kind of troubleshooter and advice guidance for churches that are wanting to step in to pioneering. Within this, we're really excited to uh, be looking at how we can link with rural ministries, urban expressions and coastal expressions about how we best facilitate pioneering in the North East. Now, of course, this person isn't going to do everything. This is a facilitator to kind of help and um, coordinate how that's happening across the area. We're going to release two partial facilitators. So there's two roles here. Um, and that is for people to two uh, ministers that are going to be seconded. Maybe all of these posts are kind of um, one day um, a week or month a couple of hours here and there in order to facilitate these roles. More of that's on the website. But these pastoral facilitators will oversee our clustering of ministers. Again, trying to support a help and support network, a place of encouragement, a place of training and nurturing. And the other facilitator that we're pleased to announce is our partnership with Renew Wellbeing. And this is because 
This is a key missional opportunity. People's well-being is really on the top of everyone's agenda. It's in our communities all the time, people struggling with their well-being. Renew well-being is a place where it's okay not to be okay. And it places kind of prayer and God's presence right in the centre of communities. And so we're going to uh, be looking, getting a facilitator in to support churches building up Renew Wellbeing cafes. So that's part of our ongoing support in your local mission. You'll be able to work with this person in establishing uh, Renew Wellbeing cafes where you are. The job for uh, safeguarding lead is already uh, out there. Um, and the closing date is this Friday. So we're looking for a safeguarding lead, hopefully to start this year, that will oversee um, the training, which is wonderfully delivered at the moment by Lynn and Jan. And we are so grateful for that. But this person will walk with the designated um, people for safeguarding in churches and oversee and coordinate our training. And we have now uh, called an administrator to work with us for days a week and um, her name will be uh, released uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks she's on holiday at the moment so I haven't got permission to uh, release her name and I don't know if she's given notice in her other place yet so I'm just gonna uh, hold that fire but we are really excited uh, about uh, the new administrator she'll be joining on the 12th of September in amongst all of this we're releasing more funding for mission and pioneering now, some of that is coming through third party funders like Baptist Insurance and the Lady Hewley Trust. We're in the in the kind of uh, conversational stages with Lady Hewley Trust about how we can release some funds for pioneering. And we hope to share more of that with you in the next couple of weeks. Sorry, this is a this is a hanger, isn't it? To keep on coming back for more information. But we're really excited about the partnerships that are flourishing here, potentially to plant and support the work that's already happening in the northeast. From 2024, we're going to be um, releasing one-off grants alongside with home mission grants. We're going to be uh, releasing one-off project grants again um, in order to just seed fund for what God is doing. We're moving away from kind of supporting um, churches just to decline. And I mean that in the nicest way. And this is this is a national Baptist uh, effort for home mission funding, as well as um, one in the Northeast. And that's to kind of go, actually, we're going to give home mission funding to things that are really missional. Often that will be mission through ministry, through uh, pastors like we have been doing. But there will be a certain edge about it where actually we're now looking at where can we seed fund for social enterprise in mission, looking at the challenges that are ahead of us. And our, pie, our hope is that our pioneer facilitator will, will be a resource and be able to help with that in coaching and guiding, but also in seeking out other grants as we recognise our Baptist uh, money is limited at this time. And we're moving our home mission grants to be based on fruitfulness indicators. This is, yes, looking at your church statistics, but it's moving away from where we got bums on seats to actually where are we seeing God be present in the community? Where are we seeing God being proclaimed in our communities? Where is our work being nurtured in prayer? How is it developing unity in the spirit and with each other? How is it equipping? There's that mentoring thing there again. How is it equipping others to lead? And how is it communicating the gospel? These are some really key indicators for us about where God is doing. And hopefully by moving it away from the rigid structure of church attendance, it will enable us to move with where God is moving. And so what to look out for as I land Updates will be on the website um, as soon as tomorrow morning, so you can refresh yourself on all of this information. All of those new roles are open for anyone to apply for. Obviously, there are per person specs and everything else. I encourage you to be praying about who God is laying on your heart to 
asked to step forward in these roles or whether God is calling you into that. The closing date is the 9th of September for those. And again, all the information will be on an e-news and in the website. Just a big shout out for safeguarding level three training that's coming up. If you've done your level two and you need level three, please do uh, plug into that. And we are seeking other dates uh, for level two training as well. And um, please pray so that we get um, the right safeguarding lead in post uh, this year. We're also going to be looking at how we support women in ministry and the Reverend Jane Day, who's um, the centenary enabler for women in ministry is uh, coming up to the northeast on the 15th of September. So and that's going to be open to not just accredited and ordained ministers, but anyone, any female that is leading in any way or sphere, we're going to come together for encouragement and inspiration. We've got that Lead Academy taster training evening on the 22nd of September. And we have an Explore Your Calling evening on the 11th of October. And again, this comes, my challenge to you is who in your congregation, who in your midst is, is seeking out, is, is seeing the gifts in them? Are you seeing them be the leaders of the church today and into the future? Let's continue to grow leaders in the Northeast for ordained accredited ministry. So if there is someone in your church that you're thinking of right now, then please do have that date in mind and more information will follow. And of course, you can keep up to date on any of our social media channels. Now, I am very aware I speak very fast. I'm told that on a regular basis basis so please do forgive me it's because I'm so passionate to see what God is doing and it is a, an evening of kind of mixed emotions there's the passion of what God is doing and there's the knowing that that Paul is stepping into something new and exciting but we hope that for those of you that were involved in the early stages in, in September and even before uh, the role was appointed of transitional uh, lead that you can see from what we've heard and what we've seen across the association, how we are responding to what you've said in creating a new structure for the future. It's really key to note that this is not set in stone. What we're going to do is we will be reviewing this in three years time. And that's because we want to hold things loosely before God to see what he is doing and be able to respond to him. And so another review will happen in three years time to go, is, is this the right way? Does it need tweaking? And we're going to be loose in all of that of actually, God, what are you saying? What are you doing? And if we need to adapt, we will along the way, because our desire is to work together, building together for God's kingdom here in the North East. So thank you.